In this video, I will show three circuits to drive a high side or floating MOSFET from your Arduino. In some circuits, like half bridges and buck converters, the source of the MOSFET is floating, so not connected to the same ground as your drive circuit. I will show three circuits built with general components that enable you to effectively drive a floating N-type MOSFET from your Arduino. The first circuit is the basic bootstrap drive. This is the most simple circuit but has limited speed. Then there is the bootstrap push-pull drive. This circuit is much faster but, as you see, needs quite a lot of components. Then third, there's the level shifter IC solution. This is certainly the easiest solution, with much less components, but it needs a special IC. I will explain and simulate each circuit step by step. I will also build and test the last two circuits to show the operation in real life. Let's start with the first circuit. The basic bootstrap drive. This circuit is the most simple and a good basis to explain how a bootstrap power supply works. Only one small NPN transistor, two diodes and a few resistors to drive a big power MOSFET with a floating source. I use an IRF Z44 which is a pretty big MOSFET that can handle 49 amperes at 55 volts. The circuit also works ok for higher voltage MOSFETs. The NPN is a general purpose BC547 which you probably have lying around. The main trick here is the bootstrap circuit which creates a floating 12 volt power supply to drive the MOSFET. Let me explain. If the Arduino output is high, the BC547 pulls down the gate and the power MOSFET is off. Now the output is pulled down by the load and the capacitor will charge via the diode and the load to almost 12 volt. If the Arduino output is low, the BC547 is off and the power MOSFET gate will be charged through the capacitor and the 1K resistor. The capacitor now has become the MOSFET's private power supply which it can carry along to the 24 volt high side. So this point here becomes a virtual floating ground for the MOSFET. So when the MOSFET is on, this 12 volt capacitor will be carried on top of the 24 volt. So the total voltage will be close to 36 volts. This also shows that the PC547 is already getting close to its limit. A PC546 can handle 65 volts, so that would be suitable up to about 48 volts. The 220 ohm resistor in the emitter is to limit the pull off current. Here you have 5 volt minus 0.6 volts for the VBE and 220 ohm, so here we have made a current source of 20 milliamps. This pull-down current must be more than the current in the 1K resistor, which is 12 volt divided by 1K is 12 milliamps, so that is okay. The second diode is to prevent the gate voltage to exceed its maximum 20 volts. If for some reason the output does not go down quickly, for instance if you have a capacitive load here, we can have up to minus 24 volt on the gate. For 24 volt, that is in practice still OK, but if you switch 48 or even 300 volt, this will damage the gate. Now let's simulate this circuit and see how it works. Here is the circuit in the simulator. The signal is set to 31 kHz 50% duty cycle, a suitable frequency for a basic buck converter. Let's simulate. 
Let's bring this up a little. This yellow line is the 5 volt logic input signal. The red line is the MOSFET gate source signal. The blue line is the output voltage. And this green line is the voltage on the bootstrap capacitor. Here you see that the bootstrap voltage is less than 12 volt because you lose some voltage in the diode. Also, there is quite some ripple, but the voltage is more than 10 volt, which is perfectly okay to drive the MOSFET. You can reduce the ripple by using one microfarad for this capacitor, but it will not affect the performance much. Now, let's zoom in on the MOSFET switch off. Here the logic signal goes high. It takes about 2.7 microseconds for the output voltage to go low. Now let's check the switch on. From the logic signal going low to the output becoming high it takes about 1.7 microseconds. So that is pretty slow. Now let's check the losses in the MOSFET. Measure RMS. The losses in the MOSFET are 2.9 watts. So at 60 Kelvin per watt, the MOSFET will be about 200 degrees. So that's much too hot. Now let's check the losses in the BC547. We're at 32 milliwatt. That means that this transistor at 200 Kelvin per watt will become about 50 degrees at room temperature. That's quite okay. Now let's short this 220 ohm resistor and simulate again. You see the losses in the NPN have increased to 450 milliwatts. This would mean that the transistor will become about 115 degrees at room temperature. So that is way too hot. So we see that this 220 ohm current limiting resistor is really needed. So this circuit can only be used for low frequencies up to a few kilohertz. Also note that it cannot be used for zero hertz. It will not work for DC. The MOSFET cannot stay on forever because the bootstrap capacitor charge will slowly leak away. Because this circuit is quite slow, I did not build and test it. The next circuit is much better, and yes, I will build and demonstrate that one. Let's go to the next circuit. The bootstrap push-pull. In this circuit, we added two things. A push-pull stage with a PNP and NPN. This speeds up the gate drive with more current. We also added a speed up capacitor of 220 picofarad to reduce the transistor switch off delay. Bipolar transistors switch off slowly because the base collector area is flooded with charge carriers. The 220 picofarad capacitor will create a negative base current peak flushing the charge carriers out through the base. You also see that the emitter resistor is reduced to 100 ohms. This will help to speed up the switch off. Because the switching is much faster now, the losses in the transistor will still be very low. Now let's simulate this circuit. The first circuit had switching delays of 2 to 3 microseconds. Let's see how this one does. Here you see the circuit in the simulator. We still have 31 kHz at 50% duty cycle. Let's simulate. Let's move this up a bit. Let's first check the switch on speed. Logic signal. And the output voltage is about 217 nanoseconds. Now let's check the switch off speed.
that is about 210 nanoseconds. Now let's check the power loss. The MOSFET, the MOSFET has a power loss of 850 milliwatt. So at 60 Kelvin per watt, this MOSFET will be about 76 degrees. Now let's check the transistor. 55 milliwatt, that's really very low. This transistor will be about 35 degrees at room temperature. So this circuit works much better than the previous one. Now let's build it and check the performance in real life. This is the circuit I built. The signal comes from an Arduino using this code to generate a 31 kHz 50% duty cycle signal. Link to the code is in the description. The 12 volt I make with a 2K2 resistor, Zener Xena diode and a 100 nanofarad cap. And here is the circuit, built on the most environmentally friendly PCB material that I could find. Let's power it up. The circuit is running and here you see the signals on the oscilloscope. The yellow line is the input logic signal from the Arduino. The green line is the output voltage at the MOSFET. Let's check how fast it is. So the MOSFET switch on delay is 360 nanoseconds. That's more than in the simulation, but still quite fast. Now let's check the switch off delay. The switch off is a bit faster, about 210 nanoseconds, just like the simulation. Now let's increase the frequency to 200 kilohertz. That still looks okay at 200 kilohertz, and with just some general transistors. So this circuit works well, but we do need quite a lot of components. Let's check out the integrated solution, the level shifter IC. For circuit 3, I use a classic level shifter IC, the IR2014. This IC has two MOSFET drive outputs, the LO or low out and the HO or high out. For this circuit, we only use the high out. To make it work, you need to connect two capacitors and a diode to charge the bootstrap supply. It also needs a 12 volt power supply. The SD or shutdown pin must be pulled high to make it work. Here I connected it to the 12 volt. The PWM signal is connected to pin 2. The 2014 can use 5 or 3.3 volt logic. The HO output is in phase with the PWM. The LO output is inverted with the PWM. Here I use 24 volt to demonstrate the circuit. But the IR2014 can work up to 600 volts. Let's simulate this circuit to see how it works. This is the circuit in the simulator. Again, we have 31 kilohertz, 50%. We have a 12 volt power supply here. And here is the level shifter IC. Let's move this up a bit. And let's check the switching speed. Switch on. Switch on delay is about 750 nanoseconds. Check the switch off. And the switch off delay is about 480 nanoseconds. Now that seems much slower than the previous circuit, but there's a reason for that. If you check the data sheet, you see that the IC has a built-in dead time of about 500 nanoseconds to prevent low out and high out to be on at the same time. 
so less than one microsecond is normally okay for power supply applications. If you need more speed, please check the specification of the level shifter that you buy. Now let's check the MOSFET losses. Measure RMS. So the MOSFET has a loss of 930 milliwatts. So at room temperature, the MOSFET will be about 81 degrees. So still okay without a heatsink. Now let's build this circuit and check the performance in real life. I built the circuit as in this schematic. And I used the same Arduino code as before to make a 31 kHz 50% duty cycle signal. The load is a 12 ohm resistor of 50 watts. And here you see the same 12 volt supply as used before. And here is the circuit. Next time I will not buy the SMD version. Let's power it up. The circuit is running and here you see the signal on the oscilloscope. The yellow line is the logic input signal from the Arduino. The green line is the output voltage on the source of the MOSFET. Let's check the switching speed. So the switch on delay is 700 nanosecond. Now let's check the switch off speed. Switch off speed is about 400 nanosecond. Now let's increase the frequency to 200 kilohertz. So this old school level shifter IC works really well and it's much easier to build. There are many level shifter ICs available on the market. Most are much faster than this one and even have an integrated bootstrap diode. Now let's compare the three circuits. The first circuit is too slow for power supply application. You can only use it up to a few kilohertz. The second circuit performs much better, up to a few hundred kilohertz, but you need many components to build it. Also consider that the maximum voltage is limited by the transistor and the bootstrap diode. They need to be able to handle the output voltage with some margin. The third circuit is clearly the winner, easy to build and performing really well. The switching delays are a little worse because of the built-in dead time, but it runs very well at 200 kHz. I did not mention before, but please pay attention to the bootstrap diode. It must be a fast diode that can handle the output voltage. So for higher voltages, for example a UF4007 would be a good choice. I hope you liked the video. If it was useful for you, please like and subscribe and write your experience in the comments.